Welcome to the land of the rising sun, where the vibrant culture, ancient traditions, and modern technology collide into a stunningly beautiful and unique experience. From the bustling metropolis of Tokyo to the serene temples of Kyoto, Japan is a country that will leave you in awe. Explore the neon lit streets of Shinjuku, indulge in some mouth watering street food, and immerse yourself in the vibrant nightlife. Take a ride on the busiest train station in the world, witness the iconic cherry blossoms, and relax in a ryokan. Discover the history and culture of Japan as you visit the ancient temples of Nara, the stunning Osaka Castle, and the peaceful gardens of Kyoto. In this series of videos, join me, my mom and brother, in exploring Japan and Korea for 24 days during the Sakura season. In this second episode, we are going to explore as if it's our first time in Japan. We'd visit Shibuya for its vibrant streets, trendy shops, and nightlife that never sleeps. We'll end up in Kawagoe, an hour day trip outside of Tokyo to see remnants of Japan's Edo period, and Shinjuku, a dazzling metropolis full of skyscrapers, neon lights, and bustling streets. Hi everyone, welcome back to my vlog, and as you can see, we are stuck with a little bit of a rush hour. This is actually pretty early for a rush hour but rush hour in Japan is when the people when the Japanese people go to work so it's usually around 6 30 to 9 o'clock in the morning and in the afternoon from 5 to 8 p.m. so if you are planning to take the trains make sure you avoid those hours and I thought we we're gonna go out of the hotel around 6 o'clock to avoid the rush hour but it's okay this is Kamakura and it's one of my favorite day trip destinations in Japan because it's really easy to get to it's only an hour train ride away from Tokyo and uh, it's uh, it has a lot of history a minute walk from the Kamakura station you'd find the second Tori gate of Turugaoka Hachimangu it's a Shinto shrine and it was founded in 1063 by Minatomo no Yoriyoshi, a prominent military leader of the time. The original shrine was located on the beach, but it was later relocated to its current location in 1191 by Minatomo no Yoritomo, the founder of the Kamakura Shogunate. During the Kamakura period, Jurugao Kahachimangu became the most important shrine in the region and it played a significant role in the development of the samurai class. The shrine was dedicated to Hachiman, the Shinto god of war, and it was believed that praying at the shrine would bring victory in battle. Over the centuries, Churugaoka Hachimangu has been damaged and rebuilt numerous times, most notably during the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake and World War II. Today, the shrine is a popular tourist destination and the symbol of the rich history and culture of Kamakura. The shrine is known for its impressive architecture and beautiful natural setting. Visitors can climb the long stone staircase leading up to the main hall, which offers stunning views of the surrounding area. The shrine also features several other buildings and structures, including a dance stage, a museum, and a treasure house. Turugaoka Hachimangu remains an important cultural and religious site in Japan and it continues to attract visitors from around the world who came to experience its rich history and spiritual significance. After exploring the shrine, definitely walk back towards Kamakura Station and either go towards Kamakura Kokomai, Hasa Station, or Enoshima Station. If you are a big fan of Slam Dunk, the manga, or the anime, definitely visit Kamakura Kokomai. It's right by Kamakura High School and by the beach where you'd see some of the scenes that you saw in the anime. Or visit Hasa Station to see Kotokuin Temple for the Great Buddha of Kamakura, or the Hasadero Temple for its beautiful gardens and seascapes. And if you want to explore a small island, definitely stop by Enoshima Station and go to Enoshima Island to visit a shrine. And sometimes if you're lucky, 
usually during this the autumn and uh, winter you might be able to see mount fuji from enoshima island so entrance fee is 400 yen per person so if you have suica feel free to click on the ic uh, option of the machine and pay using your suica card kamakura's hasadera temple officially known as hasadera is a buddhist temple that was founded in 736 ce the temple was founded by a monk named tokudo shonen who was said to have carved a statue of canon the Buddhist goddess of mercy. It was said that he carved a couple of statues. One was thrown in the water from Nara and arrived in Kamakura after a few years. The statue is still on display at the temple today and is one of the largest wooden statues in Japan standing at over 30 feet tall. We are currently standing in front of hundreds of Jizo statues. Jizo is a deity in Buddhist religion and he's a protector of uh, women, children, and travelers. So you would see a lot of people praying in front of Jizo statues, especially uh, parents who had their children passed before them. It was said that Jizo is a guardian of the underworld um, and uh, they help. Uh, the souls of the kids who passed before their parents and just like in the ancient times when people offer their swords and armors to the gods up till now where people give money or flowers or any kind of donation to a church in uh, this temple you can also buy votive tablets if you love the ocean, this place is definitely for you. You can see a lot of seascapes. You can walk to the beach. And as, as I have said before, if you love slam dunk, there's a place nearby Kamakura High School and uh, very close to Kamakura Kokomai Station where you'd see uh, places that would remind you of the manga and anime this temple is also popular for their flowers right about now it's june so you're going to be treated if you ever visit if you are ever in japan right now and if you are nearby kamakura and if you want to visit hasadera you're going to be treated to 40 different kinds of uh, hydrangeas this uh, video was shot during spring so you'd be able to see azaleas and uh, cherry blossoms and uh, uh, a variety of iris that I have never seen before which is weird because it blooms during springtime which is really weird because irises usually bloom around June or July. For me one of the main reasons why I love this area is because of this view and uh, if you are a powerful leader during the Kamakura period you would also probably want this area as your capital. Although in 1180, when Minatomo no Yoritomo rebelled against the Imperial Court in Kyoto, this area was just a small fishing village. After gaining control over the surrounding areas, in 1185, Yoritomo was officially appointed as Shogun by the Emperor, and he established the Kamakura Shogunate making Kamakura the de facto capital of Japan. Under the Kamakura Shogunate, Japan saw significant political, social, and cultural changes. The samurai, who had previously been a minor military elite, became the dominant force in Japanese society, and Kamakura became the center of samurai culture. The Shogunate also created a new military government, which was able to centralize power and establish a stable political order. Kamakura was also a center of Zen Buddhism during the Kamakura period, and the city is home to several important temples and shrines from this era, including the famous Great Buddha of Kamakura statue and the Hasadera Temple. In 1333, the Kamakura Shogunate was overthrown by Emperor Godaigo, ending the Kamakura period. After that, 
Kamakura declined in importance, and the capital was moved back to Kyoto. However, Kamakura remained an important cultural and historical site, and it is now a popular tourist destination in Japan, known for its rich history, beautiful temples and shrines, and scenic natural beauty. We just entered a cave inside the temple grounds, and this cave is not that big, so if you are afraid of small spaces, this might not be for you. This area was said to be uh, the cave where a Japanese Buddhist saint practiced in seclusion. And uh, the vibe is really old, okay. and you'll be able to see a lot of sculptures on the wall carved out of the cave. And... Uh, at the end of the cave, you have this uh, hallway. I wouldn't say it's a hallway because it's n doesn't. It does look like a hallway, but it, it's four feet tall. Oh my god! This area is like four feet. It was a little bit of a struggle walking inside that little cave, but the vibe is very spiritual. So if you practice Buddhism, this is for you. And after exploring the area, after walking around for a few hours, we are hungry. Hello. So in uh, Kamakura, you should definitely try uh, Shirasu. They are be very popular for Shirasu, but the Shirasu station that I like is right beside uh, Hase Station, and it's a little bit of a walk from here. And my travel buddies are hungry, and whenever they're hungry, they need to eat right away. So if you are like them, there's this restaurant just outside a temple where you can have okonomiyaki and monjayaki. In here, you're going to be cooking your own okonomiyaki and monjayaki or any kind of stir fry because you have your own hot pan in front of you. If you can fry an egg, you can do this too. And if you can't fry an egg, you can ask the staff to help you. This is the menu and uh, it's pretty reasonable, but the problem is they don't have shirasu and this area is very popular for shirasu. Shirasu is white bait. White bait is usually served cooked or raw in Japan. If they cook it, you can have it on a rice bowl. If you like it raw, you can have it in your rice bowl with other fresh fish as well. You can, you can have it as a nigiri or a sushi. And my favorite would be tempura. Who doesn't like fried stuff? And in this restaurant, and it's probably one of the best things that... One of the main reasons why I love this restaurant is because you can make your own food. And when you make your own food, you know what's in your food. And uh, it's kind of interactive and you learn a little bit. If you don't know how to cook, this is your chance. Um, we ordered a little bit of a stir-fried... Uh, sausage with mung bean sprouts and one okonomiyaki and then we're also going to try monjayaki. Okonomiyaki is just a pancake but it's savory and instead of just a regular pancake it's it's uh, full of uh, vegetables sometimes with meat and uh, monjayaki is like okonomiyaki 
but with the addition of dashi and a little bit of water. And when you cook onjayaki because of more liquid, you end up with the consistency of uh, melted cheese. And sometimes if you leave it on the hot pan long enough, the bottom is going to be crunchy and the top is going to be chewy and gooey. So this is uh, how you make your monjayaki. You can do it like this or you can all of, you can mix them all together in a bowl and just uh, uh, cook it on the hot pan. And once your monjayaki is done, you can eat it with your uh, spatulas like this. You use a spatula to eat a monjayaki. The vibe of the place is like a traditional house and even the bathroom looks like a traditional Japanese bathroom. You have a view of the garden from the window, you can see the flowers and this is what the bathroom looks like. One thing to keep in mind if you visit this restaurant is it's cash only. And one mistake was the when, uh, when we went here, we didn't see the cash only sign and we forgot that we don't have any more cash the, and that we forgot to withdraw money from an ATM machine. And unfortunately, around the area, there's no ATM machine. Probably there's one in the in, in Kamakura station. I haven't checked. But luckily, there's this music music box museum in front of uh, the restaurant where they have a uh, an automated money changer so we have a few US dollars in our pocket and we went there for some Japanese yen. On our way to the train station we decided to stop by this small temple it's small but beautiful there's a lot of flowers inside so if you love Japanese gardens this little temple is for you. And just a few steps away from Shugenji Temple is probably one of my favorite cafes in Kamakura or in Japan. There's this charming van meant by a Japanese grandpa who makes the best hand drip coffee I've ever had in Japan. So if you ever need a coffee break, feel free to visit this uh, adorable cafe right here. After exploring Kamakura, we are going to be visiting Yokohama next, so please feel free and watch out for the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next vlog.